Perfect. Good evening in Happy Sabbath Church. To begin this Vespers, I will read from Psalm 67, verses 1, 2, 4, and 7. Psalms chapter 67, verses 1, 2, 4, and 7. It reads, May God show kindness and bless us, and make his face smile on us. For then the earth will acknowledge your ways, and all the nations will know of your power to save. Let the nations shout and sing for joy, since you dispense true justice to the world. You dispense strict justice to the peoples. On earth, you rule the nations. May God bless us and let him be feared to the very ends of the earth. These thoughts would like to welcome each one of you for the Vespers program. Our opening, sorry, our first song will be in number 530. When peace like a river, it is well with my soul. like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul I, I, I feel the church is sleeping here. Can we all raise our voices and sing aloud, please? My sin, oh, the joy of this glorious thought. The words are on the screen. Please open your mouths and sing. My sin, oh, the joy of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the Blessed assurance, Jesus is my name, number 462. I'm number 462.
rest on my side. Angels descending, ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Savior, I'm at me and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Number 476, Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In number 476. Welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. 388. the 
safely through another week God has brought us on our way Oh, 
joyful sound, conquer sin as comfort sings. May the fruits of grace abound, bring relief to all complaints. Thus may all our Sabbaths be, till we rise to reign with Thee. Thus may all our Sabbaths be, till we rise to reign with Thee. <coughs> For opening song, let's all rise and sing hymn number 341, 341. To God be the glory, great things He has done. Let us all rise, please. as we offer our opening prayer. Our gracious, mightyful, eternal Father, God in heaven, we want to thank you for this beautiful, blessed Sabbath day, Lord, as we, the children of God, have gathered in your sanctuary, seeking your blessings and seeking your presence on this beautiful, blessed Sabbath, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for taking care of us throughout this week. Lord, your guidance, your leading in all our ways were so marvelous, Father. As we come to your holy sanctuary, we invite your holy presence to take control over us and lead us throughout this service, Father. Once again, I pray for all the members 
who have joined this worship. And also I pray for the online viewers. Bless them to fill them with your Holy Spirit, Father. I pray for the speaker of this hour. Touch his mouth. May Holy Spirit speak through us this evening so that our hearts and our minds may change and live according to thy will, Father. Once again, we submit all the people who are walking towards the church, bring them safely so that we all may worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Touch us and fill us with your spirit. Take care of us and guide us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, dear church. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Pastor Raja Fernandez. I'd like to give this time to him. A very pleasant Sabbath evening to all of you. A kindly turn to the book of Acts, chapter 20. Acts 20. We see the main concern of the Apostle Paul. And in this chapter, he expresses his main concern and also he warns the uh, early Christian church, early Christians, and also it is to the Christians of uh, the last days. From verse 17 onwards, he was uh, at his uh, second missionary journey. And when he came to uh, Ephesus, the church that he established, he invited the elders, the people who were in charge or who were laid responsible, responsibility to care for the church. And as he met with them, he was uh, expressing his um, feelings, how he established the church and how he faced opposition from the Jews. And then uh, his plan to visit Jerusalem. And as he was going through, uh, he struck one point at verse 28, Acts 20, 28. It is a warning message and also his main concern. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock. You know, he was speaking to uh, the people who were chosen to carry out the responsibility of the church, to care for the flock, the church. Uh, therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to separate the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And Paul understands that the church members, every believer, you know, to every believer, Jesus shed his blood and purchased them. And so reminding this, he asked these overseers that to take heed, to be very careful. Because in the coming days, there's going to be danger in the church. Although Christ is the head of the church, uh, of course, Christ is the head of the church. The church is pro protected by Jesus Christ himself. The angels stand God over. Yet, the church is in this temporal world and the church would face several problems. And when we come to the 29th verse, I know this, that after my departure, you know, Paul was in his missionary journey. He established several churches and uh, as far as he could, he kept visiting them repeatedly, uh, at least three times. And so he could not stay in one particular place. He had that burden uh, to meet uh, the converts of whom he brought into the church. And so he says to these elders who were supposed to look after the flock, he says, after I leave this church, after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. This is a, a new King James Version, savages, savage wolves. In other uh, new international version, I suppose, it is, if any of you have uh, this version, a grievous wolves, you know, savage wolves and grievous wolves. Whom does he refer to? 
he is paralleling the allegory jesus brought out that is the uh, the shepherds you know the shepherds and the flock uh, the shepherds are the ones who uh, whose responsibility is look after the flock the church members pastors and church members or the responsible people in the church like elders deacons other office holders in the church they were supposed to safeguard the flock and when jesus was um, uh, referring this in um, matthew 7:15 he says grievous wolves will come from among you the church members it's not referring to anybody else among the church members i know this that savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock i hope this does not happen to this uh, sunshine seventh adventist church not that one of you turn out to be a uh, heretic teaching false doctrines uh, influencing paganism what he means is that someone or one or two would come rise from the, within the church not sparing the flock and a 30th verse also from among yourselves men will rise now you see he directly uh, says men the church member men will rise up speaking perverse things perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves perverse things what is perverse things if the bible says this is the truth this is the doctrine this is it men will arise and say no this is not it is this way recently i was uh, uh, told that in this church somebody came and said no there is no trinity no holy spirit only father and son you know it happened in the uh, third fourth fifth centuries and then it continued and it will happen in the last days also it is a great warning to each one of us although paul was speaking to the the very first christians you know they were pure christians because the disciples of jesus taught the lessons that they heard from jesus himself the great teacher and so they were giving them the first hand information and so those uh, first christians in the first uh, uh, century they were very like uh, staunch christians and many of them you know they were martyrs and uh, later on paul speaks to the next generation that um, men will rise up among you and they would speak perverse things the reason they would draw the church members away from the truth we have to be very careful in, in it happened in the early christian church of course satan's attempt is to tarnish the church and destroy the church all right the great controversy that began right in heaven continues and would continue till the very end of time and jesus would be the victor and the work of the church will culminate victoriously and it is in our hands therefore it is very important for us to um, prayerfully learn the bible the seventh day adventist church has very systematic uh, uh, teaching of the bible through sabbath school lesson uh, quarterly if you honestly read that every day you would be very very well refined in the seventh day adventist doctrines and even your own a uh, church um, overseers a pastor anyone who would rise and, and teach perverse things you can just uh, at gun point say no you are wrong you see we have to be very careful how would we know the truth from uh, the error is that we must have thorough bible study and if we systematically study not that uh, oh, i have to meditate on i have to read the bible and begin the work and just select uh, one book or fine it's okay but systematic study of the bible would just teach you the truth because there is a continuation and so the paul, paul's warning he brings out his main concern is that 
take heed. So he speaks to these officers of the church because it is their responsibility to keep the flock. And then every church member learned from there. What, let's see what was wrong. What is this perverse things? Who are, the, who, who are these uh, savage wolves? Or who are these uh, grievous wolves from within the church? You know, we, we had uh, like the theology graduates. In those days, see, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, and previously the Seventh-day Adventist Church had a wonderful program. 60 days evangelistic meeting in a city, in a town where no Seventh-day Adventism. Or 40 days evangelical meetings in a place where people have never heard about Adventism. So 1981, I was beginning and then near the next station to Velo, there's one Rani Pete. Pastor P. V. Jesus was holding, um, I think, uh, 60 days of evangelistic team. They would just pile the Bibles. In those days, the Christians were lovers of Bible. Once they see the Bible, they say, I must get it. And the regular attendant, 60 days, would get one Bible free. So there would be 500, 600 people listening, all non-Adventists, Christians and Hindus and Muslims and all that. And uh, when we started this work, then the pastors from other non-Adventist churches, they woke up. They said, the wolves are here, referring us. The wolves are here, they are going to steal the flock and don't attend those meetings. And of course, uh, when we ended up after 60 days, we, there about five, 58 people were baptized. It is enough in one city where there is no seventh day Adventist to start with 58 members is enough. And then uh, now there is a school and all that. It broke. That's how seventh day Adventists spread around the world. Wolves, the wolves are coming up. But they, of course, I know, I am sure, and I tell people who are watching also that the seventh day Adventist church does not preach does not teach perverse things. You know, God has given this church the gift of prophecy of preaching, prophesying, not um, um, interpreting the prophecy like nobody else. And because of these spiritual gifts of the church, today the Seventh-day Adventist church is one of the two world churches, the Catholic church and the Seventh-day Adventist church. My friends, we must have thorough knowledge of the Bible. If we do not know, we won't know what is uh, truth, what is error. So here Paul's concern was that, take heed. Be very careful. From within the church, men will arise. They will teach perverse things. The reason to draw away the members from the church. These men... When he, when he says, from within ourselves, they are Seventh-day Adventists, they are Christians only. But I don't know with what influence they begin to teach perverse things. I know in Spicer College today, the teachers who teach, I hope I'm not wrong, they don't believe Seventh uh, Ellen White. Very sad. Very, very sad. And uh, such things happen. This is a part of great controversy. This is how Satan, you know, uh, very pleasantly tarnishes the church, they destroy the church. How did uh, Satan approach uh, Eve? <coughs> he presented the truth. Didn't God say this? Yes, he said, did God, God did say that. But you're not going to die. God said you will die, but he said you're not going to die. First, he approached her, he impressed her, presented the truth, and then captured her attention to the very core of our faith in trust in God. You are not going to die. It's a pleasant word when the doctor tells a sick, you're not going to die. It's a good news. You're not going to die. And these two trusted him, distrusted God, and we suffer because of that. So from within the church, you know, such a thing should not happen to us. Our church members, no one should ever teach perverse things. It is maybe it's because not thorough knowledge. Of course, no one has known the Bible very well. We keep on, you know, until we die, we keep on reading and learning. It's a great treasure every time. But if we give our mind for the complete rapture of uh, Holy Spirit, 
perverse things will not come from our mouth. It is such a sad thing that men will rise from you, teach perverse things. Now let's see what happened in the, uh, to the church in the 4th and 5th century. <clears throat> there was a mass conversion during the 3rd century at the time of constant time. And those um, converts were pagans. Because the king became a Christian, they became Christians. First century, first one, two, three, third century, the Christians were Seventh-day Adventists. They believed in the soon return of Jesus Christ. And they went to church, they practiced uh, Seventh-day Sabbath only. They, they practiced Seventh-day. But slowly, you know, you see the great controversy touches the very core of the doctrine, the teachings of Jesus Christ. It started gradually the church itself. Okay, let's see. False teachings, perverse things. False teachings were taught in the church. Immortality of the soul. Bible does not teach that. God is only immortal. There is no other immortal. But when Satan talked to Eve, you are not going to die, the church picked up that point and said, the soul never dies. The church taught. And that was pleasing to the new converts because they came from that background. In order to keep those thousands of new converts, you know, during Constantine, his empire, his uh, reign, you know, in order to keep, the church adopted this. The church adopted the church themselves. The leaders themselves, they adopted. They taught uh, hell fire is eternal. Bible does not teach that. You read, if you prayerfully read Revelation 20, you will know it is not. There is no separate uh, uh, planet which is known as hell. No, this earth is going to be hell for a time being. So the church started teaching that hell is eternal. And as soon as believers die, they either go to heaven or hell. They go to purgatory. There's no purgatory. Like the Bible does not teach that. It's all the church adopted these false teachings and began to influence the people. That It came from the church itself. And then the next attempt was perverse thing. Introducing pagan practice in the church. We Adventists, there is in Adventist homes, in the Adventists, we do that. You come, we we'll let's talk privately. Pagan influence, pagan practice, pagan ceremonies, pagan ritualism in the church. You know, in the third, fourth, fifth centuries, in order to keep those new converts, thousands of them, they brought huge offering and the church needed money and so they didn't want to lose those Christians and so they encouraged we must keep these pagan Christians so they tried to introduce the ceremonies and the rituals they had in their temples into the church compromising so that they would get adjusted, used to Christian way of worship. So in order to please them you know, till three centuries, there was no idols in the Christian church. They brought idols. Idol worship was introduced. And in many of the, the church worship services, pagan rituals were introduced. Birthdays, celebration of birthday was unknown among the Christians. That was introduced. That's how the Christmas celebration came. It has a pagan background. And then funeral services were conducted like the pagans. All these things, you know, perverse things. The Bible does not support all these things. When God himself says, I don't want any festival on my name. People, they, they welcomed and they liked celebrations in their homes. So gradually such compromises were introduced in the Christian churches. And because the heads of the church supported this, the people liked it and the new Christians, and the next generation, they followed all these things. This was what Paul was uh, warning. 
and it is the responsibility of the, the church leaders who have responsibilities in this church to see that there is no false doctrines in the Saint Saint Anthony Adventist Church. There is no pagan practices in the church or in the homes of the Adventist Christians of this church. And when the pastors, when the officers go visit these uh, our members, you have to talk to them that we have to stick to the purity of the Seventh-day Adventism. There are volumes written by our forefathers, the Seventh-day uh, Seventh Adventist lifestyle. This is how it is. We have to give more importance to this. This is not uh, salvation by works. It is salvation by faith only. But by living such a lifestyle, we sow the purity of our faith and gain the favor of God, then we get salvation. So it was a burden of uh, the Apostle Paul. He was speaking to these overseers because they were access to the other members of the church. He had no time to visit all these members because there was a large area he had to cover. And because of these perverse things, you know, the people fall away from the truth. If we don't have a deep study of the Bible, when perverse things are taught to us, we may not know the errors, and so we may believe it. Supposing when there was the ones, when somebody preached, there is no Holy Spirit, no, no Trinity, if uh, any new member heard, he may believe it. Somebody should have immediately said, no, this is wrong. It is our duty to keep the purity of the truth of the Bible. And so, 31st verse, therefore watch. This is how he, I think this is how Paul must have ended up the meeting with these uh, overseers. Watch. Be very careful and be very alert. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone as much as possible, as far as he could reach, it was Bob Paul's responsibility. First, he presented Jesus Christ, and he presented the truth, and they were very staunch uh, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, and then when he began to visit them again and again, then he brought warning message. My friends, in the last days, this will happen. The Seventh-day Adventists are the light bearers of the truth. Because we have the truth. We have accepted the truth as it is in the holy book. And we have received the gift of prophecy of interpreting this truth and the prophecy. And it is responsibility of every one of us to protect this truth because the truth that sanctifies us, it is the truth that saves us to God's kingdom. Conclusion, shall we all rise and sing hymn number 348, 348, the church as one foundation. Shall we all rise, please?
loving Father in heaven, we thank thee for the Sabbath evening, we thank thee for the Sabbath hours, we thank thee for sustaining us through the past week, and we have tasted and seen that the Lord is very good to each one of us. We thank thee, dear God, for this faith, and we members of uh, this last day truth church. We ask that the Lord would uh, teach us thy word as it is. We thank thee for our teachers, our parents who taught us these uh, doctrines. We pray that the Lord would uh, inspire every one of us, dear God, that we have a deep knowledge of the scriptures to uh, protect the truth and also to tell the truth to the other people. We thank thee for the spiritual gifts of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We ask the Lord God would continue to bless us as we return home. We pray the Lord's continual presence abide with us and uh, bless us with good night rest and that we may come in the morning to worship thee again and keep all of us safe through and we humbly bow down and uh, confess our sins and help us dear father in heaven that our lifestyle may be such that it would bring honor and glory to thy holy name this mercy is we pray in jesus holy name amen, amen. Please. 